gay for stay. Oliver Stewart, my ex-girlfriend began, you better leave before I call the cops on you. I did not know how to respond. It was early morning, somewhere around 5 I believe. Liz had suddenly gotten weird about our relationship, which I had admitted wasn't great by any means, and I wanted to put an end to everything. This latest conflict was the result of that, and even though I was not in the mood to end everything at 5 in the morning, I told her I would pack my bags, ASAP, and leave the first chance I got. She merely huffed and said she was going to sleep. What a heartless loser. Let me guess, I began. You do not want to see me when you wake up. Oh, you never cease to amaze me, Oliver, she grimmed, without humor, then confirmed that if she saw me again, she would call the cops. I told her I'd be out by then. I did not want to take the chance. When she was finally out of my sight, I glared at the closed door and started gathering my stuff. I was not going to fight this off. Our relationship was a sham after all, and I didn't think that it was worth fighting or ruining both of our days any more than they already were. Besides, I didn't think Liz wanted to continue this any more than me. It was good while it lasted, though. I did not have too much, but when I walked out of the apartment, I still had three trolley bags and one duffel bag with me. Having so much sucked, I realized. I wished I had a home of my own. Instead of taking the first bus to my parents' house, I decided to stalk my way to the uni. Anywhere but my parents' home. That place would be more horrible than Liz's right now. I sat in the cafeteria for the whole day to look at the place to stay. Unfortunately, I could not find any that suited my needs. Whatever was available was available at ridiculous prices. Because what did this advert even mean? One bedroom apartment with built-in kitchen and bathroom for $2,500 per month. What in the world was that arrangement? That would be a nightmare for my wallet. At the end, I realized that there was little I could do to fight this. I grabbed my bags and took the first bus to my parents' home. It was at their door that I realized I hadn't prepared a reason, but it was too late. Mom opened the door and greeted me with a wide contagious smile, which shriveled up when I informed her about the breakup. Liz was a nice girl, she began, shredding decorum for the sake of berating me. She loved doing that. What did you do to break that poor girl's heart? I didn't do anything, I replied and slobbered on my pancakes. My dad scoffed from the other end. I didn't know I'd raised a liar. I'm not lying, I defended myself. Liz got bored of me, and that's it. Whatever the reason might have been, my dad began, you did not fight for your love. Somehow, I know that much, at least. My mom came near me and patted me on the head. But we still love you, Oliver. Come on, dad and mom, I did. But that was a lie, and my parents knew that even though they dropped the topic soon after. There was no spark between Liz and me. Heck, we started dating only because Liz found me attractive and my parents wanted me to find a nice white girl. No matter how much she was interested in me and my muscles, I could not encourage the same kind of interest in her, no matter how much I tried. One of the reasons was that I was gay, and Liz happened to know that. She stayed with me for five months with that knowledge, but she probably got fed up living with a gay dude, and that was the precise reason I did not want to push her anymore. She wanted an out, which I had no right to push her to stay with me for no reason. It was like I wanted to be with her. Heck, no. We had made an arrangement, and it seemed to work out until it did not. Our relationship was a sham, and it had to end, so it did. But that was the other thing my parents did not know about, and I wanted to keep it that way for as long as possible. Why? Well, my parents' reaction to gay pride and their monotonous lectures about the failing society and family values because of all these humbugs was one big fat reason. I shudder to imagine what they would do if they found out about me being gay. I was not scared of their reaction as much as I was scared of the uncertainty that would come after it. I was scared of the unknown, so I believed it was best living under the illusion that my parents loved me for what I was. So when my mom patted my head, I lied to myself that she knew what I was and she loved me in spite of her traditional values, but that did not mean that I stopped searching for a place to stay near my uni. Being at my parents' house was dangerous. This neighborhood was filled with attractive men, and I did not want to slip in the presence of my parents. At around one, when I was sure that I had checked for every place, the uni's student newspaper updated a new advert. It was, I need a roommate to share my apartment bill with. Please fill out the form or contact me here, XOXO. And that was it. I filled the form in my sleepy state and I slept with my phone resting on my face. I hoped the next day would be awesome. Well, I was hoping for too much. Not like the place was bad or anything, but there was one bedroom that we had to share. A tiny storage room, one tiny living room, a kitchen and a separate bathroom. It was nice and cozy. If my roommate and I had become good friends, then it would be fun to stay in. Now, about that said roomie and the problem he brought with himself, he was literally the man of my dreams. 
It was like he had just walked out of my dream and graced me with his wanted presence because he knew I would otherwise chicken out. He stood at the corner of the living room, his arms crossed behind his back, as he stared at me. If I were a little bolder, I would have lied that it was a look of interest. I couldn't be sure, though. So, he finally asked, Oliver, do you like it? To pretend to be busy, I gave the place another look. Yes, I actually liked it. Harry clapped his hands in happiness. Thank God, he muttered. When are you going to shift? I will have another mattress ready, and you can use it until you buy a bed. Is that all right? I will have to make some adjustments, but nothing too heavy. Uh, I said, nice, thank you. He grinned and showed me a thumbs up. So when are you shifting? I was missing classes, and I thought it would be better to shift sooner than later. I told him the same. I don't have much, so shifting homes would be easy. Great, contact me if you need my help. Then he grabbed his notepad, wrote down his number, and slapped a piece of paper in my hands. My number, you can contact me here. I already have your number, I said. Er, from the form? Oh, he replied. All right. But I can keep it, of course. He stepped back and walked out of the place. Do send me the rent details. We can work it out over chat. That'd be great. I have paid this month, but it's going to end in a week anyways, so you don't have to pay. You'll have to begin from next month. I nodded and faked a smile. I did not fake a smile because I hated interacting with him. I faked a smile because I did not know how long I could keep up my pretenses. My heart was bursting with the thoughts of him understanding my affection to him. God, how cool would that be? I would be free with him. But there was a conversation at hand here, and I had to physically shake myself out of my delirium. I shall contact you soon, Harry. Don't contact others until then, I waved and stepped out of the apartment. Promise. He showed me a thumbs up before locking the door. I huffed. As I walked down the stairs, I couldn't help but take the support of the wall. Man, was I really going to torture myself living with a guy like Harry? I couldn't help but despair over the choices. Something so beautiful was going to be so near me all the darn time. And I wouldn't be able to touch it. Darn it. My fate sure adored making me suffer. Living with Harry was not a pain in the head. Sure, I was distracted by his beauty like 99% of the time. But even then, I couldn't deny how easy it was to live with him. The first week, we cleaned the single bedroom to make space for my bed. With two beds in there, we had little space to move around. But with the sunlight streaming through the open windows, it was bearable and nice. We arranged our stuff in the limited space and then arranged the living room so that it would be easier for us both. The entire thing took us hours. Thank God it was Saturday. When we were done, we dropped dead in our beds. I was staring at the ceiling when Harry suggested the most ridiculous thing. It would be nice if we had a single bed. Uh, what? Would die of gay panic then, Harry. He looked at me. I mean, a little big, obviously, so that we don't touch, but then there would be more space. I guess, I replied, but did not look at him. Oh, I forgot to mention one rule. I sat up, finally. What is it? I hope it's not something weird. He gave a small laugh. No partners allowed. No one night stands. Nothing. I nodded. That was easy, except now I would have to be more subtle about what kind of stuff I watched on my laptop. But I informed him that I did not have any girlfriend. Or boyfriends, he said. Boyfriends are not allowed either. Oh, I said, and I tried to maintain a confident visage, even though I was freaking out from within. A boyfriend was exactly what I needed. I am, uh, not gay. Oh, he said and curiously looked at me. Not gay either. I gave an awkward chuckle. That's good then. Man. We can talk about girls all we want. Ha 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 ha. I'm sure a single bead of sweat slid on my cheeks. I hope you didn't see it. I did not want to be so obvious. Like hell I knew shit about women. Yeah, we can talk about women all we want. He grabbed his phone from his pocket and asked me what I wanted for dinner. A month into my sharing the apartment with Harry and we did not talk about women once. There was this one time that the conversation started between us, but it had mostly to do with the protagonist in this sappy rom-com we'd picked up to watch. But it died down so soon that it was almost pathetic. I did not know anything to comment, and he did not seem too much into it either. Heck, I swear that when we dropped the subject, Harry seemed relieved just as much as I felt. We were similar in so many ways, it was funny. We even decided on the cooking and cleaning days. Three days were on him, and three days were on me. On Saturdays, we left everything for the next day. Saturday was fixed for us to waste our time on whatever we wanted. So Saturdays were mostly spent on watching a new movie, finishing a new book, or picking another, or discussing our syllabus with each other. So in one way or the other, we could say we had formed a friendship. It was nice living with Harry, even though gay panic was a new routine for me, and it usually happened when he suggested some activity. And his activities always seemed like sweet dates, the kind of stuff I saw characters on TV do. 
This Saturday was no different. Want to go to the beach for a walk? He asked. Er, uh, I said and looked at the watch. It's eight. He shrugged. We'll be back soon. Promise. The beach was almost 45 minutes away from where we lived. He wanted us to drive to the beach and then walk there. No matter how weird and ridiculous the idea sounded, I told him I was in. We reached around nine, and he parked his beat-up car among other people's ridiculous expensive ones. And we went for a walk. When he slipped out of his slippers, I did too. I seemed to copy him without knowing. It was becoming a habit, a weird habit that I hoped he was not catching a whiff of. What made you want to walk around the beach at this hour? He shrugged. What do you plan to do after college? Man, I hated that question like no other. Adults were supposed to ask that, not us children. Even though we weren't exactly children, I still hated that question. When I made a face, he started laughing. Come on, he said. His face looked red like a tomato. What do you want to do? I want to be a librarian, I answered. But you're a political science major, he exclaimed in surprise. So what, I shrugged petulantly. How many books have you read, Mr. Oliver Stewart? He wriggled his eyebrows. If we're here to give me an existential crisis at my young age of 19, then we are doing a splendid job at it, I replied, a little annoyed. I made a turn to walk away from him. He gave another little laugh and followed me. Hey, sorry. I didn't want to upset you. Hey, Oliver, stop. He grabbed my sleeve and forcefully turned me around. He managed to do that despite being smaller and shorter than me, only because I allowed him. I was sure, but the movement pulled us closer than either of us were expecting. With little to no distance left between us, it was hard to not notice the freckles on his face and the way his brown eyes looked from this close. God, I was melting. When the moment stretched a little too long, we pulled away. Harry coughed a little and started walking again. I followed after him but maintained a distance. Neither of us said anything for a while. I think we should go back, Harry suggested then. I looked down at the watch. It was past ten and we still had to drive ahead of ourselves. Plus, tomorrow it was my turn to cook and clean. I did not want to wake up groggy the first thing in the morning. I agreed and we walked back to this car. I proposed that I could drive and he gave me the keys. After that, it was silent in the car. The next morning, I woke up before him. But like every other fascinated fool, I stared at his sleeping face for a while. From this position, the sunlight did wonders on his face, and I was so deep into it that I didn't worry when I suddenly started appreciating that very thing. It was only when a sneaky little part of me started provoking me to push his hair from his face that I stormed out of the bedroom. Nope, nah, I wasn't going to take that risk. While I was busy cleaning the entire day's worth of dishes, my mom called. I groaned. I washed my hands and picked up her call. I knew I couldn't ignore it any longer. This was the fifth time she had called since yesterday. But when I heard what she had to say, I wished that I hadn't. What do you mean you guys are coming here? Mom, it's just us two guys here. And that's why I cannot trust you with him. I need to see if he's good. He is good. Oh my god. I slapped a hand on my forehead. Mom, neither he nor I do anything to scare you off. God. Oliver, she shouted. You do not talk that way. We're coming next weekend and that's the end of the conversation. Then she hung up. I looked at my phone in annoyance. Just then, Harry sleepily walked into the kitchen. He was shirtless, so I made an effort to look at his face only. Hey, morning, I said. He leaned against the wall. A parent's visit, huh? I shrugged and colored a little in embarrassment. Sorry about that. Oh no, nothing to be sorry for. My parents did the same with my previous roommate. He was gay, so they freaked out. I had to kick him out. For a second, I couldn't help but look at him, confusion, and wonder, even though I was harboring a crush on him, I did not want anyone to find out about it and then give me the shits about it. The reason my parents hadn't caught on to my lie yet was because I did a good job pretending to be straight. But with Harry so near and my crush so obvious, I didn't know if I'd be able to face Harry's parents. Are they going to visit again? I asked a little hesitantly. Not like I'm gay or anything, haha. <laughs> but still. Then I stupidly rubbed my nape. He shook his head with a little smile. I didn't tell him. They're a little embarrassing. He rubbed his chest a little. Should have seen the way they talked to my roomie. I hadn't felt like that kind of hatred for my parents ever. But you kicked him out. I had to. Otherwise my parents would have done it over and over again. He straightened. Anyway, you better start thinking how you're going to welcome yours. When are they coming? Next weekend, I answered. He nodded. We have some time. Don't worry, man. He patted my shoulder. You going to shower? Yeah, I am. He looked around the kitchen. Haven't you cooked anything? I will. Give me some time. I grinned and returned to the dishes. Fuck, man. Democracy sucked. The next weekend arrived quicker than I expected it to. With Harry's help, I cooked food that my parents didn't even bother to eat. 
They arrived, made some comments about how tiny the place was, and then sat down to discuss Harry's present, past, and future plans. Every time they dipped their feet in private matters, my right eye twitched in irritation. Several times, I tried to stop them from crossing the boundary, but their curiosity did not seem to end anytime soon. Harry, for his part, remained polite for most of it. Then he got off the couch and walked into our bedroom. I told my parents to control themselves, and that what they were doing wasn't polite by any means. My mom replied she was just looking after me, but I reminded her that I did not need her looking after me by humiliating my roommate. She looked a little upset, but I knew she would eventually come around. I followed after Harry and closed the door behind me. Harry was lying face first on my bed. I sat by his side. Man, your parents are something else, he commented with a little grin. He was desperately trying to be as polite as he possibly could. Sorry, I replied. I was embarrassed and I wanted him to know. Geez, it's all right, he replied and looked at me when I lay down beside him. He turned to face me and meet my eye when he said, My parents are way worse, trust me. I swallowed and unfortunately my eyes fell in his mouth. It was only then that I realized how close our faces were. Even though a part of me was aware that the door wasn't closed, I couldn't help but not move. In my last ditch attempt to keep this arrangement with Harry safe, I continued our conversation, or at least made an effort to. Second month's nearly over, they have come to check up now. At least they did, Harry whispered, his face still turned towards me. They care for you, at least we can say that much. Our faces were still close, yet all questions about Harry apparently being straight flew right out of my mind. At that moment, it seemed like he really wanted to kiss me, and honestly, fuck my pretense. I really wanted to kiss the hell out of him too. My gay panic was at its peak, and I still wanted to kiss him. I hadn't seen this change coming in me. It was new, yet I was not afraid of it. See, this is why I was afraid of sharing with him. Beautiful men were always a red flag. As much as I hate to say this, their love is conditional. And not even five seconds later, my dad opened the door and came storming in with a barrage of complaints about something new. He stopped, however, when he realized how close Harry and I were lying. We quickly moved away and sat up. Even though I hadn't done anything, I felt guilty and avoided my dad's eyes. Harry cleared his throat and grabbed his wallet. Gotta go. Then he left. I bit my bottom lip and avoided my dad's eyes. When I heard the front door close, I sighed and snapped shut my eyes. Did Harry really need to leave me when I needed him? I couldn't wait to send him a set of angry emojis. I hope your studies are going well, my dad began. Yeah, dad. It's going good. Would you like coffee? Harry, do you have a new girlfriend? He asked. It did not allow me to leave the bedroom. He stood at the door like a human wall. My mom came to check what was going on between us. She had been left alone for too long. I couldn't help but scoff. Snooping around was a habit of hers. If that thought anything was suspicious, he was sure to tell her everything. I knew he would even exaggerate. That was how the relationship worked. No, I replied. Just got a new friend. Harry's his name. Then stay away from Harry. Why do you guys just sleep in the same room? The beds are too close. You can shift your bed in the living room. Shift it, all right? I gave him a subtle glare. Nothing's wrong with the setting, Dad. Oliver, don't talk like that to your dad. He said to change the room, and that's a reasonable advice. If it doesn't work, then look for other places. I'm sure you'll find some good ones. No, Mom. I'm not going to do that. I sat down on the bed. You guys should return. It's a two-hour drive, and the weather's not good. My dad turned to my mom. This is why I said something's wrong with him. And thus began their old way, discussing me in front of me, and talking about me as if whatever I did was wrong. For the next 26 minutes, I tolerated their nonsense and then repeated that they should return home, immediately. My dad got a little upset and almost raised his hand on me, but then left in a hurry. Mom followed after him. I closed the door after them and leaned against it. I was so sick of pretending, I realized. When Harry returned several hours later, he had some alcohol with him. I asked how he found it, and he replied that he had several older friends, and thus we began drinking. The clock hit 11 and we were still drinking. I talked about my parents and the stuff they had said before they left. Harry consoled me and said he had worse things to say about his parents. Thus, I heard his stories in amazement. And I wasn't sure who leaned in first, but by the time the clock hit midnight, we were kissing. What was worse was that we were still partially sober, and we knew what we were doing, but that did not seem to stop either of us. Even though we were hesitant, as obvious by the slobbering kisses shared between us, we kept on going. By the time morning had arrived, we had already slept together. Although the night had passed, we remembered whatever had happened between us. So the next morning, neither of us could pretend that it happened in our drunken state, for it was alcohol's fault that we didn't realize our sleeping partner wasn't a woman. What happened to the charade? 
Hey, dude, I'm straight. I knew I wasn't straight, but what about Harry? Was he gay too? When I woke up, Harry was lying across my chest. I looked at his beautiful face despite my ongoing gay panic, but I did not dare to move for fear of facing whatever was definitely going to happen. I slowly breathed in and out, but I could not help but relive last night's memories. It was so fresh in my head that I wanted to kiss Harry again. Maybe it was the thought of kissing him that I moved a little more than necessary and woke him up. When Harry woke up, he seemed groggy at first, and then realized what happened. He moved away from me, and neither of us looked at each other. He grabbed his side of the bedsheet and ran out of the room, and I lay there, crying. Fuck, what now? It had never happened before, and I didn't know how I was going to deal with it now. Two days later, and the silence between us grew deafening. I couldn't help but try to talk to him. I tried not to move in that direction, but I did anyway. Hey, I said, when he did not respond. I continued. Do you want to talk? Why not, like, that was the first thing he said? Uh, I replied, because I did not know what else to say. What was I supposed to say to that? We had kissed and slept together just two days ago. And we both looked into it, so I was to take his words at face value? Harry, that's not the kind of answer I'm seeking, I began. I'm sorry, but we need to... I really don't want to talk about it. Don't you get it? He nearly hissed and looked at me angrily. For God's sake, Oliver, we became such good friends and spent such a good time together. And that stupid mistake would ruin everything. If we don't talk about it, then it's going to be all right. We will move on. You want me to pretend that that never happened? I asked. For now, yes, we can be friends again. And then it'll be all right. Well, for once, it looked like someone else was more afraid of coming out than me. In a cruel and mean way, that seemed to relieve me. For my entire life, I was worried that I was the only cowardly individual who couldn't stand the idea of people knowing that I was gay. But there was Harry, proving me wrong. In some weird way, not being the only scared gay man gave me confidence. It was weird, but it was what it was. I am afraid. I can't do that, Harry. Then he said with a resigned face, I better avoid you. And then we did not talk for the days to come. The same weekend after several attempts to get to him, I realized I needed to give him space. In that process, I would be able to give myself some space too, and perhaps that was the thing we needed to save our friendship. I packed my stuff and then shifted to my parents' house, and it was a headache too, honestly. They could not understand my going in and out, and they had the kind of questions that I knew they would. Commuting from here to the college from my parents' place was a nightmare, and I did that for the next few weeks until Harry messaged me and gave me hopes that things might look better for me. It was just a few weeks of development, and yet... I couldn't believe the message sitting on my phone. He had written a simple confession, but I understood the weight that it carried. It was something I wished to tell my parents. The sentence was simple. Hey Oliver, I just wanted to let you know that I'm gay, and yes, I loved what happened between us that night. With my heart in my throat, I messaged him back. Hey Harry, thank you for telling me that, but I have a confession to make as well. Well, you see, I'm gay too. I didn't really have the guts to tell him how much I loved that night. I wanted to tell that in person. I wanted to see if I was as brave face to face as I was during the messaging. He then asked if I had told my parents about it, and I informed them that I hadn't. I didn't even need to ask about him. We knew what his situation was. So when his next message came, I started packing my bags once again. I really hoped it would be for the last time. His simple message was, want to be gay together, but in secret first? And considering how unsure I was of letting people know of my sexuality, I believe that was the best thing that had come my way in a while. Well, if I did not count Harry in it, of course. The next weekend, I decided to shift to his place. Whenever I would confront my parents about my truth, I would need Harry by my side. Looking at his smile, I could say he felt the same. And if I said nothing changed between us after that, I wouldn't be lying and the only thing we added to our routines were the kisses and nothing else. We fit together and the palpable tension between us seemed to diminish with each passing day, until I couldn't feel it between us anymore. Conclusion We did tell my parents and his parents about our sexuality, but only years later. In a way, we did that to make sure our parents did not stop supporting us in the middle of our studies. When we finished our graduation and found ourselves good enough jobs, we decided to let him know. Among our four parents, only one seemed to come to terms with the truth, and it wasn't my parent. Sadly, my relationship with my parents ended soon after, and it never picked up again. My relationship with Harry wasn't exactly smooth, but it was the best I had. Because we were experiencing this kind of relationship for the first time in our lives, we realized we had a lot to learn. And together, honestly, we did. The End
The process of falling in love is not systematic, it's natural. Then why do some people find it easy to be against one kind of relationship and not another? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching. Consider subscribing to become part of our rainbow force and stay wholesome.